Hello. Today we're going to discuss the transport phenomena problem. It's a diffusion into a semi-infinite slab. For this case, we're going to study the diffusivity of a blue dextrin dye in an aggregate gel. We are interested in the measure of the diffusion coefficient after a period of 24 hours. We extract after a period of 24 hours a 2 millimeter deep um, sample and the concentration is 0 0.203 grams per liter. So we are going to plant or establish a mathematical model to calculate the diffusivity or diffusion coefficient in this particular case. We draw um, a model for our system. We can see that there is a, a initial concentration, a final concentration, our two centimeter thick infinite slab, infinite, and we have a little watch over here, a clock, that is going to tell us that we're going to measure it after 24 hours. For step one, we have the diffusion convection equation. We assume that there is no reaction in its rectilinear system, so it only goes in one direction. So we have this following formula after this, assumptions. Step two, the total flux equation. We neglect the advection, that is a bulk motion in a system. Since we don't have that here, we can neglect, neglect it. Step three and four is combining the past equations into one. This is a fixed law, and after we combine it, we have this fixed second law. This fixed second law, it only applies to this certain type of systems. It only appears when it's needed, you know? Fixed first law is always needed in all transport phenomena problems. Step five is the indefinite integral. We introduce a new variable here, courtesy of Boltzmann. He says that lambda depends on z and t. So he says, establish that lambda equals c over square root of four dt. We use the chain rule when c is a, fact, is a function of y and y is a function of x. This is a little example over here, how it would be. And this would be our particular case in our system. We obtain a partial de derivative respect to t on this side, and we obtain this over here. When we do the partial derivative with respect to c on the other side, we have this following thing. After we substitute lambda into our equation, we obtain this from that side. From the other side, we obtain that d squared c over dz squared equals d over dc multiplying dc over dz. And once we substitute also there our following equation, we end up with this. And we need to do a partial derivative respecting two different things. Thanks to the Clariot's theorem, we have that the partial derivatives can be done in any order. It doesn't matter since they're the same, they're equivalent. So after doing the partial derivative, we come up with this equation over here. After combining our both equations, we cancel the d's here and we put everything onto one side. This gives us this following equation which we need to solve. We solve it letting u be dc over d lambda. After we separate the variables and put all variables depending on lambda on one side and all variables depending on u on one side, we we can now solve our indefinite integral. On one side, we're going to obtain log u, and on the other side, we're going to obtain minus lambda plus k0. 
after unfolding our U and coming back to our original DC over D lambda, we're going to finally come to the general solution, which is going to be this equation over here. We then establish our boundary conditions. So when CA sits at C0 and T is bigger than 0, we're going to obtain that CA is the concentration of saturation, which is 1 gram over a liter. Then CA is going to be C infinite when C is infinite or our 2 centimeters, the end of our gel. Then CA is going to be our concentration measured at 2 millimeters after a period of 24 hours. Now we can introduce the Gaussian error function which looks very similar to our general equation and it says that it, when it evaluated on zero it equals zero and when it's ev evaluated in infinite it's going to be one and that one equals two over square root of pi multiplied by the square root of pi over two. So now we evaluate our general solution into zero and we obtain that K1 is going to be our initial concentration over here. Then we evaluate that function at infinite and we obtain this following equation over here. And after a, a few steps forward we finally end up with this other solution which is going to help us calculate the diffusion coefficient that we are interested in measuring. Then after using Wolfram Alpha to solve for D we obtain this following equation for the diffusivity. Then we substitute our values and come up with this final result. Thanks with to MATLAB, we can calculate it much easier. And that will be all. Thanks for watching.